now at five, an iconic Miami Dolphins Hall of Fame journey. To be here in Canton and see the, the Aqua North represented in the 99 jerseys, and even the Tannehill jerseys, the Rio jerseys, just Dolphin fans in general. It's overwhelming. It's great. Tonight, CBS 4 News in Canton as Jason Taylor becomes a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And it's been a busy couple of days for Taylor and his family. And it'll all culminate tomorrow night with his induction into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And CBS 4 sports anchor Jim Barry is in Canton for the special moment for JT and us Dolphins fans. Jim, you <laughs> caught up with Jason this afternoon. How's he feeling? <laughs> Oh, he is feeling really terrific, I'll tell you. And I can only imagine how he feels because we're exhausted just following him around. They're talking about a tornado warning here in Canton, Ohio. But to Jason Taylor, it is a bright, sunny afternoon. And tonight, I think it's really going to hit him because, as you can see behind me here at the Canton Convention Center, they are setting up for the Hall of Fame gold jacket ceremony. That's when Jason Taylor gets his gold jacket. And that's when he really, I think, is going to feel like a pro football immortal. Jason Taylor's whirlwind weekend began last night when he and the other new Hall of Famers were introduced at the preseason Hall of Fame game. Starting to hit you yet? Uh, yeah, you kidding me? <laughs> when I got in that plane this morning to fly up here, it, uh, it hit me really, really hard. And On the sidelines, JT was greeted and razzed by his new Hall of Fame fraternity brothers. I'm just happy that the, the, um, the Hall of Fame lowered their standards for the good guys. But they can't take it back. <laughs> Today, Taylor struck a pose with more than 100 other Hall of Famers at a luncheon. Inside the shrine itself, Taylor's picture and presence is already evident. He's joining 310 football immortals, an elite group which already includes nine other Miami Dolphin legends said he was too skinny. They did, and I like the fact, I like it when people are too small. They say they're too small, too skinny, uh, and they turn around and prove them wrong. Court Murchie and his 10-year-old daughter Emily are doll fans from North Dakota. Last night, she gave Taylor a handmade card. We are here for Jason Taylor's enshrinement. Emily actually made him a card. And did gave you it to really? Him yesterday. Yeah. What did he say? He said thank you. He said he really liked it, and that he and he said he would keep it, and then he gave me a hug. Oh, did that make your day? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome. At those kind of off-the-field moments, coupled with a stack of game-changing plays that have catapulted Taylor to football's ultimate pinnacle. When he got the call from the hall at this year's Super Bowl, Taylor was mildly surprised, but not his family. He would never, ever talk about coming here, obviously, because he's such a humble guy. I mean, you've known him a long time. You know how he is. Uh, but we all knew he was a Hall of Famer, so it's, it's great for him to be acknowledged in this way and have his career validated and everything that he's worked so hard for. It's an impossible journey, really, I thought. And, you know, even as I'm sitting here now as a Hall of Famer, I still, there's a part of me that still says it's, it was impossible for me to get here, but, you know, it's, it's worked out. Miracles happen. Kids, folks, everybody out there, miracles happen. And Jason Taylor is living proof of that miracle. Indeed, we spoke to his sister, Joy Taylor, who said she is absolutely certain that tomorrow he is going to cry. And Jason agreed with that. Now, another Dolphin Hall of Famer, Larry Little, said, Jason, whatever you do, man, don't cry tomorrow at your speech. But JT says, forget it. He's not too proud. I can tell you that one of the things that he is most proud about is that other Hall of Famers are coming up to him and saying how much they appreciated how he played. In fact, some of them today even wanted his autograph. How about that? We'll have a whole lot more coming up at 6 o'clock. Until then, live from Canton, Ohio, I'm Jim Barry, CBS 4 Sports. Jim, he was so dominant. What do you think is his legacy as a player? Obviously, he's got a post-career, post-playing career legacy, still very involved in the community here in South Florida, but all on the field. Oh, as on the field as a player, unquestionably, he got the trifecta. A lot of opposing coaches talked about that. Jason Taylor would not only sack the quarterback, he'd strip the ball from him, then pick it up and run it in for a touchdown. When you look back at the number of times that happened, most of the times when Jason Taylor did that, the Dolphins end up winning. It's such a huge momentum swing in a game for a defensive player to score a touchdown, and Jason Taylor made a habit of it, and that's one big reason he's bound for Kenton. Yep, you would always see that 99 whip right by the screen every time you watch on a Sunday. Thank you so much, Jim. Appreciate That's it. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. And we'll have much more on Jason Taylor's Hall of Fame weekend and how Ryan Tannehill is doing. We'll have that tonight on Camp Dolphins after the CBS 4 News at 11. And the Dolphins' first preseason game is now less than a week away. The Finns will take on the Atlanta Falcons Thursday night at Hard Rock Stadium. Kickoff is set for 7 o'clock. Watch it only here on CBS 4, the official home of the Miami Dolphins.